Hi, uh, welcome to a look at using and developing uh, for elementary OS from a low vision point of view. My name is Justin. I'm a technical project manager at Purdue University's Engineering Computing Network. I'm a computer enthusiast who humanizes technology through design and development. I'm also legally blind. What does that mean? It means that a person has less than or at 2200 vision without correction. Practically, that means that someone with perfect vision, 2020 vision, can look at something from 200 feet away and see it clearly. However, I or someone else who is legally blind wouldn't be able to see it clearly from that distance and instead would need to be about 20 feet or closer before they saw it with the same clarity that someone with perfect vision at 200 feet sees it. What does that mean for computer usage? It means that I use magnifiers a lot and other accessibility tools. So you know a little bit about me and how I use computers. Let's talk about using elementary for me. First, I wanna get some things out of the way. What this talk is not is a tutorial for creating applications. The elementary project has great documentation that I suggest you look at. And I'm a web developer, not a desktop application developer. This is not a comparison of native and web technologies. For that, I suggest you check out the GTK for web developers talk. Really, this isn't a technical talk at all. So what is this? This is a critique of elementary OS's low vision accessibility tools, their magnifier, screen reader, sh keyboard shortcuts, and the like. It is a review of elementary OS's developer tools from the point of view of a low vision developer. In this talk, I'm talking about my experience, not just as a low vision user, but as a low vision user trying to develop applications for other low vision users on the platform. Subsequently, this talk is also a call for help because the people who need these types of tools like magnifiers and screen readers are typically the best people to design these tools. However, because these tools need to be in place before someone can use them, that means that the people who are best able to design these tools are often the least able to create these tools. So let's talk about using elementary, starting with its installation. Off the bat, you should know that I did not install elementary in a typical way. Rather than having a live USB or other external media, I used VirtualBox to install elementary OS to an external drive. This is for two reasons. One is because I wanted to use an external drive to experience elementary OS, the same installation across multiple devices, my desktop, my laptop, other people's computers, and get a feel for how it's going to be with different peripheral setups, different pointing devices, different screen sizes. The second is because during the installation of elementary, there is no magnifier, the tool that I use primarily to interact with text-based or UI-based interfaces. So during installation, I used Mac OS's built-in magnifier to see the text that I could see. You'll notice with the screenshot on screen that some of the installer is cut off here. This isn't an issue with elementary, rather it's an issue with VirtualBox not properly setting the screen size. So here, some of the elements required for interacting with the installer are off screen. However, I was able to use the Orca screen reader, which is available in the installer, to interact with and navigate the elements that are off screen. This was an unintentional, but very good exercise for navigating the screen as a completely blind user. And it worked well. Big props to the elementary project here for having clear descriptions of the UI elements that I was selecting and a clear path forward for getting things configured. Now, after initial installation and setup, I was greeted with a first login screen. At the login screen, there's still no magnifier. There are 
<clears throat> there are a couple of things to note here. On a single user system, this may be okay. As a low vision user, I can assume that a single login card is something that is meant for me. I enter my password and log in. However, for people using a multi-user system, this may be more complicated and having these tools available both in the installer and the login screen would make it easier for low vision users to use the system, especially at the setup phase. After the initial login, I noticed that there is a beautiful desktop. However, there's no affordance of the tools that make it accessible. I knew based on guessing that meta plus equals allows me to zoom in with the magnifier that is enabled by default. Meta plus minus allows me to zoom out from the magnifier. There are other keyboard shortcuts that allow the navigation of the system. However, they're hidden in the shortcut overlay accessible by the meta key. These tools are here and the keyboard shortcuts being uh, available after login make them usable. However, not knowing about those keyboard shortcuts, not having been told about them as a low vision user, if I were very new to the system and couldn't make these educated guesses, the tools may as well not exist, despite how good they are. So if I had a recommendation for the installation process, I'd say copy where it works. For macOS Big Sur, there was the introduction of the first screen of the installer, being an option to turn on accessibility tools. From here, I could turn on the magnifier for macOS Big Sur and toggle it with a keyboard and mouse combination of control plus scroll. This keyboard combination is something I've come to use over the past 10 years. So I have a bit of bias about how much I like it. However, the more that I use other systems that do not combine keyboard and mouse shortcuts for their accessibility tools, the more I come to appreciate it. This is because when I am in the magnifier, I am entirely bound by my mouse to navigate the screen because I only see a small sub part of it. So to have a magnifier that is entirely controlled by keyboard shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts that require two hands no less, then I am forced to move my hand from my mouse, my primary navigation tool, to the keyboard every time I want to engage or disengage the magnifier. For someone like me who does this tens of times a minute, it is a huge bottleneck to the workflow and rather disorienting. If there were one thing that I were to request from this presentation, it's to have a combination of keyboard and mouse shortcuts to allow the magnifier to be used. Thanks. Moving on. For general usage, I'm not going to go through a step-by-step -step guide on how I configured my system or things that got in my way, but I will touch on a few things that are critical for me in navigating a system as a low vision user. The first one here is window management. I'm coming from Mac OS. I use a tool called Shift-It to manage my windows. Shift-It allows me to snap to the left, snap to the right, as well as snap to one of four quadrants and give me granular control over the size of a window so that at any arbitrary place, I can increase or decrease the whole window, uh, <clears throat> allowing me for incredibly granular keyboard-centric window management. This combined with application switcher abilities allows me to virtually, uh, to, to control my windows virtually without ever touching my mouse. On elementary OS, I have some basics. I have what I needed for this review. I could snap to the left and I can snap to the right as well as magnify and unmagnify to the original position. I would like to see more granular keyboard based control ideally that's matched with other input devices for window management so that when I get into something more complex like a three window setup or an uneven window setup, for example, when using the code editor provided by elementary OS, that won't snap exactly to half the screen. Another bit is that while I am in my magnifier, the ability to have drag and drop control over different UI elements is critical. This is because I have direct correlation with what I'm seeing on screen and the actions that I'm performing. 
on Mac OS while zoomed in, I can drag a file through the file manager into one of my bookmarks, or I can drag it out of the file manager and onto my desktop for easy access later. However, with elementary OS files, I can't do this. When I drag a file into my shortcuts, it prompts me to have that as another shortcut, but not move it into the destination. And with the non-existent desktop feature of storing files on the desktop or in a desktop folder, dragging it out of the file viewer also rendered it, or also was impossible. What I was left with was having to use control C and control V to copy and paste a file. However, without some system level keyboard shortcuts for navigating particular folders, like command shift H to go to my home folder in Mac OS, this became a bit tedious. I later learned that I could use control L, like in a browser, to start controlling my path bar and type in something like tilde forward slash to reference my home folder. However, this is a text centric use. And without my magnifier already being in place and zoomed into the appropriate level, it's sometimes difficult to guess where I am. Moving forward, there's also other text-based things that are limiting for a low vision user like me. One of those is filtering. In macOS's Finder, the default behavior when you start to type while a window is open is to filter the selection of the current directory open based on what you're typing. For example, if I type D-O-W and I have a downloads folder, then the downloads folder is selected and highlighted, a strong visual cue that this is now the active element. I can then interact with it via the keyboard uh, using command down or command up to navigate down or into or out of folders appropriately. In files, the default behavior is to search and give me a list of all of the possibilities of my search term. This is useful, However, it's not as visually uh, it's it's not as visually easy as the filter and highlight method of uh, Mac OS's Finder. Furthermore, on remote file systems, files will try to index quickly the entire file system or a, a subset of the file system, but it does take several seconds for me to get visual feedback when I'm doing this. Some other text-based things around the system are, in macOS, I use iTerm2, my font size is set, and I am, my font size is set, and I am able to rely on my applications reopening with a set font size. However, in the terminal of elementary, while I can change my font size by a percentage amount, when I close the terminal and reopen it, my font zooming settings are no longer set. This became rather irritating as I switch in and out of the terminal for compiling uh, application code, for navigating trees, for using command line utilities and the like. I would really like to see an option to fix a, a text size in my terminal and particularly fix a text size in my terminal that is at a point or pixel counter rather than a percentage. Other text-based things are now going to be getting into particular tools. In VS Code, for example, my editor of choice, though I can't use this for application development on elementary for its lack of uh, Vala support, um, when I select text within matching brackets, as I am next to the bracket, the bracket will be highlighted in a light gray, but the text highlighted in a light blue. In elementary OS's code for the same example, if I'm next to a bracket, both brackets are highlighted in a medium gray and the text that I'm selecting is highlighted in a medium gray. This led to some confusion as I was manipulating text because when I would select the text in this example in between two angle brackets, the angle brackets would highlight, suggesting I had them selected when I didn't. So at this point you might say, these aren't important things. These are very small details. These are things that you can change with adding keyboard shortcuts or implementing more control in the uh, gestures and keyboard shortcut menus of the operating system. These are aesthetic things. These are minor differences that don't affect the overall usage of the system. And with that, I would agree with you, which brings me to this. While I have been nitpicky about the things I'm talking about in elementary OS with things like 
I want different shortcuts, or I want my text to be highlighted in a different color. Notice what I didn't say. I didn't say that I couldn't install elementary OS. I didn't say I couldn't connect to the internet or had problems with Wi-Fi. I didn't say my peripheral of some sort didn't work, that my display driver wasn't configured properly, or any of the other common desktop Linux complaints. Everything worked out of the box. I had access to the tools that I needed, albeit they didn't behave in exactly the same way that I wanted them to. This is a big plus from the desktop Linux that I knew 10 years ago, or even five years ago. Elementary OS is the most accessible desktop Linux experience I've had as a low vision user, even compared to some of the bigger names like Ubuntu or OpenSUSE. On top of that, Elementary OS has the best developer story I've ever seen on a Linux desktop. As I went through and tried to develop my basic applications, the instructions were clear, concise, they gave me a simple click next to follow the new tutorial, and there's a complete developer story outside of the how. With the ability to create applications, package them as flat packs, put them in the app store and monetize them, there is a top to bottom solution for moving from having no application to solve a problem to having an application available to users in a standardized way, accessible via magnifiers and keyboard shortcuts and other accessibility tools with the added benefit that developers have a reason to keep putting this effort into their application on top of base functionality. That effort is uh, adding accessible design or revisiting accessible design translations and other forms of engagement with their users because they might be able to receive a bit of money from there. Lastly, it's up to the developers now to design their applications with accessibility in mind. While there are ways in which elementary can improve, like including some more scaffolding in the Granite library, their GTK extension library, um, <clears throat> for the most part, it's ready. As a low vision developer, I was able to install the system, get my developer tools, make a couple of simple applications, ship them on the app store, install them myself, and get the other tools that I needed for work. I was able to install Google Chrome and Zoom for this call, as well as Slack and other editors like VS Code. Granted, I had to jump through some hoops to get flat packs working or install some things from Snap or get some things from Debs, but everything was there. The functionality is existent. And with some minor tweaking and some improvement moving forward, I think that elementary can stay on top of the accessibility game, fundamentally changing the usage of a computer for some people who otherwise don't have options. With that in mind, I'd like to thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, there's a live Q&A following this talk, as well as the ability to contact me on social media. On most platforms, I am available at techdev5521. Justin couldn't make it for Q&A today, but don't worry, Dan and Cassidy are back. Yeah, it was a great, hey. great talk <laughs> looking at uh, uh, how important accessibility is in an operating system and, um, you know, how it compares to other platforms. Um, real quick, uh, Chris was talking about pillows. He'd never seen them before, but I do happen to have an EDW pillow right here. So if you are wondering what they look like, how nice and plush they are, and uh, what, what's on the back side, because I, I know we don't have that on the website. So you got a little little cool neon elementary logo there. So, yeah, I, was, I love that they're double sided. It's they're so cool. so cool. Yeah. And there's they're like they're very, very comfortable. Um, I have fallen asleep several times on the couch with this pillow. So <laughs> they're, they're very nice pillows. Highly recommended. Um, the T-shirts and tank tops are also nice. And so they're the super soft, like tri blend cotton stuff. So good. All good merch there. <laughs> but yeah, um, let's continue this conversation about accessibility in elementary OS, um, especially looking at elementary OS 6 and some of the uh, improvements that have been made and, and the, the progress we've been uh, making there. So I guess first, um, I want to preface that we went through the issues raised in the talk with Justin, and we've made sure they were all filed. Uh, we actually have... Um, 
you know, we, we've been working on this long term project called accessibility features are just features. Um, and we've written a few blog posts about those. So these issues are important to us. And we know they're important to users. Um, Dan, if uh, if there's any developers out there who are able and willing to tackle some of those accessibility issues, where can they go and where can they find those? Yeah, well, so we have a, a projects page on uh, GitHub organization. So if you go to github.com forward slash elementary, there's a tab there that's projects. And we have all of our ongoing projects there, including this accessibility one. So you can um, see right there where we have all these issues kind of laid out and triage on a big progress uh, project board. And, and that's the best place to find uh, to get involved with accessibility projects or, or any other project, too. Yeah, for sure. And that's that's where we always try to put those issues. Um, and it's it's cool because it's it's nice to see how somebody might think it's just a pet issue for themselves. So, you know, this just affects me. I have some bad eyesight or something, but it's like, no, it, it can affect users all over the place. Um, kind of on that note, what are some of the accessibility improvements that have made it into elementary OS 6 thus far? Yeah, there's been a huge actual um, a focus recently on really improving things like contrast. Um, we, we've gone through, and Anna mentioned in her talk, using a lot of these tools like color contrast checking. And so the new uh, style sheet is really focused on trying to meet at least that double A level of compliance uh, with all the different accent colors in both the light style and in the dark style. So that's a, that's a huge one is just trying to make sure that things are, are legible. Um, but also, you know, we're really diligent about trying to make sure that we have tool tips on everything and on images, um, because it is important for things like screen readers to be able to read out like what a thing is or for you to be able to get inform, uh, a little bit more information if you're maybe having trouble making out what an icon is. And speaking of icons, there's actually been a ton of work to make icon shapes uh, a little bit more distinguishable, especially at small sizes and reduce the amount of overlap and things like that. So uh, we've been really working a lot on our visual style to try to make things more clear. Yeah, and then there's also the the text scaling, text size feature. Um, that's another big one for, you know, not only can you zoom in on the screen itself, um, but you can uh, actually increase the size of the text throughout the whole operating system. And that increases the size of the user interface elements, uh, makes everything more easy to, to view. And that's great for hardware. You know, it's great for people who may have impaired vision or may, you know, have a certain screen resolution that they that doesn't work quite as well out of the box. So um, that's that's another example of how accessibility features help improve the experience for everyone. Yeah, that's a huge one because, you know, in Elementary OS 5, we did have the text scaling features built in. And it's funny, a lot of people think that they need to go install a special tweaks app to change text scaling. But yeah. that's, you know, that's a, been a built-in feature. Um, but now it's, it's not just text scaling because we realize that, like, when you start pumping up the text that spacing can get awkward and it looks weird. And we had this really like second class experience for people that needed larger text. And so we've really gone through and make sure that that also affects the spacing in the UI. So things still look natural and you're not, you're not getting this kind of like, uh, you can increase text, but it's not a great experience. Like now it's something that we're actively testing and making sure that like, this is a good consistent experience, no matter what size you need your text to be. Yeah, absolutely. And I know this is something um, Anna mentioned in her accessibility talk yesterday. Uh, so if you're interested in this topic and you're watching at home, um, be sure to catch Anna's talk from yesterday as well. There's a lot of good information about developing apps and um, experiences for people with disabilities. But um, what are, I guess, what are some ways to ensure that your app is going to be accessible by default when you develop an elementary OS. Can you touch on that a bit? Yeah, you know, it's a there's a big one that um, a lot of people get intimidated when they're starting because they're like, I don't know what tools I need or what checkers or what or, you know, how can I do that? And one of the biggest tools to test for accessibility is to use the tab key on your keyboard. Mm -hmm. You know, just test keyboard navigation because solving keyboard navigation is a huge part of lots of different accessibility tools, including screen readers or things for people with uh, mobility disorders. So if you can work on keyboard navigation, um, that's going to be a huge one that's going to help a lot of different kinds of people and not just people with uh, accessibility needs, but it's also a huge feature for people uh, that 
you know, just really like getting around that way, like with developers, right? So you're you're not just um, gonna be working on something that, you know, a subset of your users are going to use, but it's it's something that benefits the experience for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And, and another point on that is not doing more in your app, not overriding the defaults in your app. Um, that's something we see in a lot of apps with keyboard accessibility specifically is, you know, GTK built in the toolkit has keyboard navigation built into it uh, and focus states. And it has built in ways to say, this is the default uh, button in a dialogue. Um, instead of saying, hey, grab focus or, you know, you mess with focus in weird ways or change what happens when you hit the right arrow key versus the tab key. Instead of doing all that extra work, lean on the toolkit itself to do the defaults. And then you're more guaranteed that it's going to be accessible as well. Um, let's yeah, that's see. a lot of great points. Checking out the chat for more questions here. Do you have something there? Yeah, uh, someone asked about a uh, global screen zoom in and out, and they mm -hmm. wanted to know, um, you know, how to access that. And uh, so in uh, we've had for quite a while, you can use super plus or minus to zoom in. And um, thanks to some feedback from some people in our community in elementary OS six, we've increased the amount of zoom you can do. So now mm -hmm. you can zoom in like really, really far. Uh, and thanks to Jose's work on multi touch, you can assign a multi touch gesture to zoom as well. So it's a lot easier for you to uh, assign that to a gesture and be able to zoom in as you're navigating because it we've um, seen that a lot of people uh, you know they'll zoom in and then zoom out and then they'll kind of use the UI and they'll zoom in like as you need it so it's it's not necessarily something that like you're always zoomed in like mm -hmm. it needs to be quickly accessible right yeah. And I know there is also an open issue. Um, you know, multi-touch is great if you have a trackpad. I love it. I've started using a trackpad on the desktop because of these awesome gestures. But if you're using a, a more traditional mouse, um, there's an open issue as well to do like a super scroll uh, in, in Gala as well. So, and that's on that project, project board we mentioned earlier, the accessibility features are just features project board. If you're a developer and interested in implementing that, um, that would be great. And I'm sure building on the multi-touch zoom and the um, super plus and minus zoom would be um, a good idea there. Yeah, um, I mean, that's something that Anna touched on in her talk, right? Is we mm -hmm. wanna make sure that we have multiple ways to access features and that's the best way to make them accessible is, is to make sure that you have multiple interaction uh, methods. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this, we kind of touched on this a little bit, but I, th I think there might be a, another, more of an answer here as well. Um, Varun Singh asked, um, how can we test apps we make to make sure their accessibility is working as intended? We talked about keyboard focus. What are some other ways? Uh, to open up the screen reader, you know, yeah. open up the screen reader because that's a built in feature and um, just, you know, close your eyes or, or turn off your monitor and and see what happens when you do that and just kind of try to try to experience it through those eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And another one is, um, you know, ensuring your app works in some of the new features in elementary OS six, like the uh, user preference for a dark style. I know that's people sometimes don't see the dark style as an accessibility feature, but personally I get migraines sometimes and I need to make everything dark. Um, and so it's great when apps follow that preference as well. So just ensuring your app works with all of the accessibility features that are built into the operating system. Um, you know, you can test it with the on-screen keyboard as well. That's there. Um, you know, check out the settings, settings in elementary OS and just poke around with the ones that you might not use normally. Normally, um, you know, yeah, text that's a great example. Go ahead. Sorry, that's a great example of temporary disability too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, and something that's a temporary disability that I think almost all of us has experienced is take your laptop outside and see what it's like in a bright yeah. environment. And you can see then how important contrast is too. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that again, that's when in uh, code, that's when I use the, the high contrast mode in code, you know, I don't usually need high contrast and things, but man, when my laptop screen, no matter how bright it is, when it's in direct sunlight, you need as much contrast as you can get. So yeah, testing out all those options that are available in the operating system. Um, another one was, um, the the dyslexic text mode you know don't this kind of goes back to what i was saying earlier of don't don't do more than you have to in your app um you don't have to set your all these fancy fonts if you don't want to or when, if you do make sure it works when the operating system switches out the default fonts as well like for the dyslexic text or even features like the screenshot tool um switching out the fonts so don't do more than you have to. I mean, that's good. I feel like that's good programming <laughs> advice in general is don't, don't do any more than you have to. And, and, um, the operating, then you get to lean on the operating system and the toolkit and all of the accessibility features that are built in there. 
Yeah. Checking the chat here for any more questions. For, we've got a couple more minutes. Yeah, we can get a couple more accessibility questions in chat. That would be great. I'm trying to think of more accessibility features um, in elementary OS 6 specifically. I know there's been work in the greeter. Um, that was something that Justin raised in his talk is that we don't have, we don't currently have that zoom feature in the greeter. It's just in the session. Um, so that's something there's an open issue there. Um, that's something we can look at, but there yeah. are, we did add a, other accessibility options in there, like the screen reader and the on-screen keyboard as well. Yeah, and bringing those to the installer session as well. And that's another yeah. big one is we now show that accessibility indicator in the greeter and in the installer session so that you can get to things like the on-screen keyboard. Yeah, yeah. So it's always a, it's always a, an ongoing project to, to ensure that we aren't just building those into the session once you've already gotten in, but that you can actually get into your session and get it installed. It's definitely um, important. Let's see. Looking in the chat here. I think that might be it for questions. Um, thanks again, everybody, for, for watching that talk. And sorry, Justin couldn't be here, but hopefully our little impromptu Q&A helped answer some questions. <laughs> um, again, check out that uh, GitHub project board at github.com slash orgs slash elementary slash projects slash 35. Um, sorry, that's a little bit of a long, you can also just go to uh, github.com slash elementary and view projects there. And it's the accessibility features are just features um, for a lot more issues that we can tackle. Thank you.